Howdy. As Eminem said in his hit song, Kill Shot, you want to talk about it, let's be about it. And so about two months ago, I built and installed the Cowl intake, a cold air intake, similar to Trailhead Off-Road's design, um, similar to the Bleeping Jeep video on how they built their uh, Cowl intake. Now the argument of whether or not you should use or could, can use PVC or CPVC, the chlorinated version, costs more, but it has a higher temp. Uh, can you use that in engine bay parts? A lot of people on the internet say no. A lot of people say yes. What is the answer? Who knows? It's complicated and controversial as all things are in the Jeep world. So watch this to find out how I built it, what you think went wrong, what you think went right, and what you could do a little differently on your own vehicle. So let's get to it. Good afternoon, we're here in uh, Smoky, Washington, and we are working on the Cherokee. Today we're going to try and build a custom cowl air intake. Now this is the intake that came on my Jeep when I bought it four or five years ago. You know, just a cheapo O'Reilly Spectre. Sure, I mean, it clears up some space in your engine bay, but it's really not getting any colder or different air than the traditional box. Some might even say it's worse because you have to, you know, JB weld some stuff together. You might just want to stick with the original instead of going with the auto zone cold air intake. But a cowl intake pulls air from the inside of the firewall from your cowl up here. So it's higher from the water level, so you're less likely to suck water in. And it gets air from the slots in here rather than in the engine bay. So we're going to try to do this on the cheap for less than you can buy them. They're 150, 250 bucks for good, you know, made in America ones. So let's head to Lowe's and let's do this. So first up we're gonna do is address the issue of clearance under the hood. And this looks like it will clear if we cut it down to about this height. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use this as a guide and this line as a guide and cut this 90 degree pipe right about there. Now, this rubber seal around my throttle body is actually the bottom of the old intake that I had because it fits up perfectly for this shortened 3x3. Three three. Now, I have to hammer that on there and we're going to see if it will clear with the hood all the way down. Alright, so step uh, one test fit. It kind of clears the hood. It's going to be a little tight, so I don't know, might have to do something up there to work with that but for now I've got this cut and I might be able to cut it a bit more but I'm worried about it also clearing over the uh, cam over the top. No, it's a little hard to tell here but my idea is trying to get that circle just a little off to the passenger side of center of that area right here. Whoa. I don't know if you saw that. Lightning. What the hell just happened? That, uh, that lightning was just over my head. Alright, back to uh, this. Um, yeah. So, I'm going to try and get the center of this to right about that area. This marks the spot. And then, uh, Cut this right about here then. Now that we have the general layout for the most part finished, the biggest thing left for us to do is cut through that firewall and that's no small feat. So we need to be pretty confident. There's two ways we can do this. We can cut through it, take the cowl off, fit the air filter in there, and try and leave as much of the metal here as possible or we can build a shroud to go over it, similar to that that comes with like the Thor cowl and a bunch of others. I think I'm gonna go with the shroud mechanism, although it does require building a whole extra thing. I think it'll look the best. So uh, let's start cutting. Now to address the crankcase valve, a previous owner put, you know, there's just this mini little 
air filter on it. Don't know how well or not well it's working, but the crankcase valves are leaking, so we'll be replacing those in a soon to come video. But for now, uh, this is what I came up with. This is a one inch brass uh, sprocket, and one side's threaded, one side is ribbed. So we're gonna put one on both sides here, and one will be connecting from the crankcase valve. The other will be connecting from the now dislocated um, evap canister, the charcoal canister. And so on this side we'll have one, and on this side we'll have the other, and I will simply cut the evap line from up there and route it directly to here instead of having it come all the way out and around and in. Good news, bad news. Good news is this k and filter does not fit. Now I thought it would fit. It does not fit. It's not flexible. It's not going to do the job. So I'm going to put that to the side and a future car will get that. But I went on k and website and let me tell you that was the best car parts ordering website ever. So having cut this out and measured it, I've got about seven and a half inches from the center to the back about five inches from top to bottom and you know as much width as I want and they have an oval flat uh, AT-6091 filter that I think will be the best absolute best filter for this and I think it's going to take the entire XJ community by storm just kidding I don't know why no one's done this before and I don't recommend cementing anything until you are well and proper done with assembly of all the parts. I'm gonna try and get this as flat as possible. I'm not really worried about... I'm not really worried about having to dye this and, you know, put threads in it. I think it'll just cut through the plastic itself, and if it's a bit too tight, I'll just take that file. But I'd rather it be too tight and have to thread it in than too loose and it won't stay in. Now, I love the Home Depot, you know, built not bought look, but we should probably paint match all this together. So I've got some ultra high heat. I didn't even want to play around with the engine stuff. I wanted to go straight to the 2000 degree guarantee. So let's get the paint on. Now that is so much better looking. We are getting close here. We have got our new filter ordered right from KNN, the AT6091. It is a uh, almost rectangular or oval size, so it'll fit this perfectly and it's rated for high enough uh, cubic intake, you know, air intake. So now we all got to do is uh, mock up a cardboard box, make this fit a wee bit better because we're uh, touching the filter right here. So I'm taking my measuring tape and looks like we want about four and a half inches out from the firewall to where we want this wall to interact here. And the bottom of the box I want to connect to this lip just under where my wiring harness is now this wiring harness is routed in different places in different jeeps like literally one year to the next year or even the same years so they will have different placements of the wiring harness mine's kind of the worst of the worst so hopefully yours isn't quite as close to the firewall but so four and a half inches out about five and a half inches up and about seven inches wide at the top and about, about six inches wide at the bottom. So now I'm gonna put those measurements onto a cardboard box, tape it up, and I'll get this out of the way so that we can you know, work a little bit easier. Now my original plan was to have the metal sheet folded and kind of in the exact opposite of this, so folded up and come out here. But, and this is why we're doing the cardboard, this ridge comes down and sits right there. So we uh, improvised, adapt, overcome, got this ridge knocked down. Now down here I have a same similar knit, same similar ridge that we will have on the bottom, a metal fold there, a metal fold there, and then a 90-ish or whatever type of angle that is. And you can see this is bent in, covers it perfectly. Thank you.
Now we've got our prototype fully cut out, sized, and as you can see, it flattens out perfectly. Now when we lay it across of our metal sheet that we're going to be using, we're going to trace it on, giving probably an eighth inch of exterior spacing for the cutting or the kerf, the area we will lose to the blade. Also just, we'll be able to sand, take away anything later on. You can't really put stuff back on unless you have welding abilities for that. So now that we, once we've got it all cut to shape, we're gonna clamp it between a piece of wood and another piece of wood in our vise and start from the inside bend out. Now when we're making these bends, we want to be careful. This is a very thin piece of metal we're using, so you can scar it or score it before though, but you want to be careful not to cut all the way through it. Now if it's steel, and you've got a steel capable welder, it's not a big deal. I'm using aluminum, I don't have a way of welding aluminum at the moment, so I'm being careful not to overscore it. Now once we've got it all bent up into shape, we can uh, work on cutting that hole out. Oh, that is pretty much our finished product. We've got our box installed just using some self-tapping screws. I got one, two, three, four, and I might add some to these side panels later on. But I've got the 90 degree flex hose right here. And you can use a flex hose, you could use ducting. There's a number of things if you are more or less comfortable using. I think this is gonna work really well. It's gonna take a lot of the shock and movement from the engine. Now we've got our size of this. We just need to figure out where we wanna put it onto here. All right, now let's take this back out and cut that hole in it. And then just like SpongeBob, we will create a perfect circle. Some of you may be wondering why this is such a weird shape and size. Well, this came with uh, the same ends on both pieces, but this fits into the inside of that tube perfectly and not leaving a little bit of this rim left to notch it, kind of give it a bit of resistance, a place that it'll just kind of seat into perfectly. Now, in a perfect world, you would just use a hole saw, but I don't have the hole saw of this diameter. And also I don't want to go buy one or find one because this is not your average diameter at about three quarters three inches and so what I am gonna do is use my trusty old grinder why because I've been using it for everything forever and I'm not, I'm not half bad with it so I'm gonna knock out this hole and go cut I'm going to cut the line inside between these two lines so that will allow me to have excess to grind down and make smooth and more perfect never overcut always undercut undercut it'll be your friend Well, we're all done. It's installed and it's been about three months since I installed it and I've had no issue. The one thing I have added um, in, you know, just making sure everything fits and seals upright, and this is both aesthetic and I was worried about the vibration of the engine causing a seesaw motion to cut through this rubber. I found no evidence of that. It looks in great shape, but you know, I took it all off. I inspected it and I was looking at everything and I saw on Amazon, uh, this seal right here that has a real interior, has a metal lining, 
put around it is another rubber. So the rubber on rubber, I think is going to hold up a lot better. Might create a little bit better seal to keep uh, dust and air and heat out of uh, out from the engine bay and from the cowl. Just keep that a little separated. Hopefully, keep a little bit more cooler air moving in. And I say that for the most part solved my biggest concern. Um, the biggest con I have found in the three months is that the sound of your engine is a lot more audible. There's uh, almost like the sound of a supercharger whine of a V8 sort of sound. You know, it's not a V8, it's an inline six, and this engine can suck in a uh, good way, which is why we want this whole system to get us colder air from the cowl rather than the hot air from the engine bay, freeing up that space so we can put a, uh, you know, a dual compressor or something to run some air lockers and whatnot. But um, certainly took some time to build, probably a full weekend, uh, just because I like to really take my time, kind of go slow build prototypes, especially this cowl box, um, and I know it's not the most beautiful stuff, and if you want something beautiful, just spend the money and buy it from somebody who's going to, you know, make a CAD program, like uh, Trailhead Off-Road has an awesome pre-built system, it's going to save you a lot of time, but it's going to cost you a lot of money, so if you want to build it yourself, do this, if you want to support an American company and spend some money instead, go to them. Uh, some people are concerned about the plastic melting. Now. I got CPVC, which is chlorinated PVC, much higher uh, temperature, but 200, and the Jeep's supposed to operate at 210. Some people think that's going to be terrible, it's all going to combust and burn down your engine. Three months, I've had no issue. Plenty of people will verify they've had no issue with that. I also had the aluminum heat shield I put on, just to kind of keep a little bit of heat from directly above the engine off of that. I really don't think it's going to be an issue. I hope this video, at the very least, inspired you into what course of action you want to take, you know, is that sound on the inside, you know, a bit too loud, you don't want to do that, or maybe you do want to go after the metal, or just buy it from Trailhead Off-Road. Any of these options, I hope this uh, helped you make that choice. Thanks for coming along. Remember to like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram at some guy's Insta page, and remember, if some guy can do it. <laughs>